Welcome to our shoulder health program for you to transition back into the gym using weights and machines safely. Now, believe it or not, there are a lot of machines at the gym that can hurt you. And you see people using these machines all the time, and you probably use them as well as myself. There's not a lot of information out there about why these are painful, but I'm going to get into how to avoid them and keeping your shoulders strong and safe. I get a lot of people who come to me because they've hurt themselves at the gym. And we have to address why that is. Now, our shoulder is built in a way that as we lift, our rotator cuff can get caught under this bone. You can knock on it. As you lift, you can get caught right under there. A prime example for you to test this problem is to put your thumb down here. Lift up your arm. How high can you go? I start catching my shoulder right about here. Now if I twist my thumb up, I can come all the way up. Now why is that? That's because with my thumb down or my palm down, I can catch my tendon under the bone. That's the problem with our shoulders. Some people can get away with it because they do not have this problem where they catch their shoulder. But for many of us, we do. Now if we exercise in motions that put our palms down, or our thumbs down. When we do these motions, we are catching our tendon under the bone and we think we're getting it stronger, where in fact, we're fraying that tendon every time we do the exercise, making it weaker and leading to shoulder problems. You've got to think of what you're doing at home, different motions. Think of a lawnmower, palm, palm down, reaching up to get something at home, palm down. Uh, the way we will lift at work, uh, going to get a suitcase in the overhead compartment of an airplane. These things are the motions that we do every day that we don't think about, but we have, we have to be more cognizant and do them with our thumbs up. You want to come on with your palms up under, your thumbs up, and you want to be grabbing objects like this. Same thing with our weights. When we do exercises at the gym, we do not want our weights oriented like this with our palms down. And we especially don't want to be doing that when we go higher than our shoulder level. We want our weights up, thumbs up. So when you're doing weights, you're coming straight up like this. When you're doing the machine and you're doing the shoulder press, you press with the thumbs facing you, thumbs up, and you push up in front of you. Our body was never built to operate parallel to us. So when people do this exercise up here, where it's right by your head, that's a bad exercise. A lot of times people are going to hurt their shoulders. Now that we understand the shoulder mechanics at the gym and why the exercises we're doing hurt us, let's go over the things that we can do that help us. Again, exercises with your thumb up or thumbs facing you are good. So when you go to do a shoulder press, you want to grab the machine like this. Press up. Stay within a height that is comfortable. Never go through sharp pains. If you feel sore after your exercise, just don't go as high. We never do shoulder press exercises up here. We never do anything like this. This is going to bother you. Only up through here. Good. The lat pull down bar is bad exercise. A lot of times people will pull it in front Pull it in back. You've got three things going on here. We're elevated, our thumbs are facing the wrong position, and we're parallel to our body. Bad exercise. What you want to do instead is get in front of a double handled bar, pull it down like this. Again, look, our thumbs are facing my you know, right directly to us. You're coming straight down, you're in front of your body, you're not out to the side you're pulling the shoulder blades down. That's a proper lat pull down without hurting your shoulder. Other exercises I commonly see people do. This, another bad one. This is, again, your palms are facing down. This is the one that's going to lead to impingement, catching your shoulder under the bone. Here's how to uh, apply the principles to chest press. Again, right here, my palms are facing down. Bad exercise. Any incline 
or any exercise where you're doing the chest press here, you can actually have pain. All you have to do is grab the handlebars here. Every machine usually gives you a second option. And now my thumbs are up and I'm doing the exercise without risking any shoulder injury. Same principle if you're pulling the machine back. Pull the machine back with your thumbs up. Boom. Right here, as opposed to being here, and pulling back. That's going to save your shoulder a lot of trouble. Let's talk about how to work the rotator cuff at the gym. Because if you notice, there's no rotator cuff machine at the gym, which is perplexing. And that's why a lot of people hurt themselves. When you work other muscles and you ignore the rotator cuff, when you're getting stronger with your shoulder, you're actually creating weakness. There's a natural balance between our rotator cuff and our other stronger muscles like the deltoids. So we must work rotator cuff when we work deltoids. But the lack of uh, a rotator cuff machine means you need to get a little creative. Again, we showed you with the bands, but we'll show you the same premise using hand weights, or sometimes they have those other weights you can hold, kettle exercises, uh, kettle bells I think they call those. Hand weights, and actually we're going to show the cable cross too. So, hand weight right here, you keep your shoulder level. Showed you this with the bands, this is how to do it with the hand weight. Very simple. Right there. You're keeping your sh shoulder level, your elbow stays bent 90 degrees, you can use your other arm as a little perch so that your elbow doesn't go up and down as you move. And there you go. That's all you need for some weights. If you add this to your normal weight routine, you're going to be ahead of the game and you're going to balance your rotator cuff with your deltoid strengthening. If you want to get a little more advanced, they have those cable crosses. And what you're going to do is you're going to, you can usually just slide the machine up or down and you want to get the force of the pull to be about your shoulder level. And you're going to apply this technique that was very similar to what we just did. Shoulder stays on the level, it stays bent 90 degrees, and you pull it up. It's a subtle, small motion. That's all you're doing. My elbow's not moving back, it's not moving up, it's staying bent 90 degrees, here it goes. This will drastically strengthen your rotator cuff. You don't need a lot of weight here. If it's sore, do it lighter or contact your therapist if you're having any difficulties. That's great rotator cuff exercise. You can actually do the same thing in front. Have tension, elbows on a perch at 90 degrees, and here you are. You're coming forward. I like to use a pizza slice as an analogy. That's about as far as you're going. You're not going a whole half a pizza here. Just one pizza slice forward. Just a couple degrees, keep your elbow at a 90 degree bend and at the same level. And that's how to strengthen the rotator cuff at the gym.